You want a fall garden that feeds you until Christmas? Keep watching. There's at least $6,830 worth of vegetables behind me. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I grew them all. I'm Zach Buckle. I own this vegetable farm you see behind me and we're projected to hit $100,000 in vegetable sales this year on a half an acre of land. If you're interested in growing your own food, hit that subscribe button and notification bell to see when I come out with new videos talking about growing food in a really cold zone five climate. So step one in how I got there is one inch of really high quality compost added to all of our beds in the spring or the fall. We're in the fall now. This compost is going to be breaking down all winter and will begin to feed our spring crop that we plant next year in around April or May. And it'll also slowly be breaking down all season to feed the fall crop that we plant after the spring crop. So one amendment of compost feeds two crops, not just one. And really high quality compost will keep the life flowing in your soil and keep the soil health really high for years to come. Every inch you add will make the crops in years to come better and better as you add it. The reason everything behind me looks so full, lush, mature, and sexy is because I plant everything on the farm according to a fall planting schedule, which I'm gonna put a link to in the description. And I plug in my climate's average first frost date, which is September 21st. And that calendar will tell me the right seeding date for all the crops that I wanna eat in the fall. and for example, these two beds of celery behind me, I seeded one bed February 15th, one bed March 1st. That's how long ago I've been planning for this fall abundance here. And so if you go through that every week and seed whichever crops that you wanna eat in the fall, you'll have those plants ready to go whenever you have a bare spot in your garden. For example, this bed right here is open. So if it was a couple months ago, I would plant this bed with whatever plants I have lying around that I know will mature by around September 21st. And if I don't have plants, I'll throw seeds in the, in the ground, something quick like radishes, arugula, turnips, something that I know will mature because you don't have to have starter plants for absolutely every fall crop. But if you have the starter plants, you diversify your variety of crops to be eating in the fall. And you really wanna do that because there's a whole lot of food you could be eating even in a zone five climate like mine, where we get winters that go down to negative 30 Fahrenheit, there's still a ton of food you could be eating up until Christmas right outside in your garden without any fancy greenhouses. You just got to keep to that fall planting schedule and you're going to have a really, really full fall garden. And that honestly tastes way better than the summer garden. So to feed that fall crop, every single bed, gets a amendment of dried nitrogen material like this. This is a mix of alfalfa meal, kelp meal, biochar, and a bunch of other stuff I can't remember. But there's a whole lot of options out there for dried nitrogen. Alfalfa meal is probably the simplest one. That's a 3 to 2 NPK ratio. That's really easy. And I don't really pay too close attention to the measurement of nitrogen per thousand square feet. Uh, because that compost does a really good job of feeding the soil in the spring. This stuff is really just a boost. So if I was doing this on a garden that was about half the size of one of those beds, all of those beds out on my field are 50 foot by 30 inches or 50 foot by two and a half feet. If I was going to do this on a garden, which my garden is 25 foot by two and a half feet, I would use one scoop of something like this and just try and dust it as evenly as possible across the bed and rake it in with a rake so it breaks down and the worms will come up and eat this and turn it into soil, but it also will feed your plants nitrogen. And it gives them a really nice boost of fertility in the middle of the growing season to get them really nice, lush and healthy looking by this time. So adding a nice dry amendment, you could use stuff like turkey manure, organic, chicken manure, stuff like that. You just want to be a little light on the nitrogen because if you do too much, you know, you could burn your plants. But with most of these organic fertilizers, you're not going to burn them too much. I'm going to leave a link to the place that I buy this from 
called Seven Springs Farm Supply. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description. And you can kind of go crazy looking at all the different options that they have. You will have to pay shipping, but a 50 pound bag of one of those items will last you a really long time in your garden. I have to buy pallets of that stuff on the farm and I burn through it a lot faster than you will. But one of those 50, foot ba 50 pound bags of alfalfa meal or soybean meal, or even this, which is called the Never Sink Blend, last you for a really long time in your garden. And I'm sure you can find stuff like that locally. So using a dry amendment, in between your spring crop and your fall crop will help that fall crop look absolutely gorgeous and sexy by the time your first frost hits. Carrots are the star of the show when it comes to the fall garden because if you get them mature by your first frost date and you keep them in the ground, they just get sweeter and sweeter as the weather gets colder and colder. So we've got six 50 foot beds of fall carrots here in the field right now. Some of them are actually still growing and the way we got those is by planting them first week in July in my climate. We have a 120 day growing season, so I want to make sure that I plant my fall carrots as early as I possibly can. So as soon as I got my spring bok choy out of the ground, I put in fall carrot seeds because the window of time to plant carrots is always really narrow. Even in my context where I have greenhouses, it's still pretty narrow. It's about two or three months to seed carrots, to have carrots fresh or even storage carrots supplied all year round. And a lot of these carrots are gonna be storage carrots. But the way we did that was we seeded them with a push seeder. I used the Jang seeder, you could use the Earthway seeder. And we watered the whole field every day for 30 minutes to make sure that the soil doesn't dry out. There's a lot of tricks out there for germinating carrots, but I like that one the best because when I plant carrots, I plant a truckload of them because I don't want just one little square foot of carrots. I want hundreds of pounds of carrots to feed my customers all winter long. So we've got at least 150 pounds of carrots per bed here. So that times six equals six times, that's 900 pounds of carrots at least it might be more because in my experience the storage carrots get bigger and they weigh a lot more that's a lot of carrots and so i have to have a large area to plant them in so i use a sprinkler like this wobbler sprinkler that you see behind me uh, to water them in and keep the ground moist for nine days at least because it takes a long time for carrots to break that seed hole and turn into a germinated sprout and once you get that germination down, you pretty much just water them just like you do every other crop in the field. But once that germination is done, you can pretty much rest easy that you're going to have a truckload of carrots come fall and you got that timing right. So make sure you look at that fall planting schedule to find out the best time to seed fall carrots in your climate. So I don't want to have to manually plant every single fall crop a second time throughout the growing season if I don't have to. So what I do is I plant a lot of crops that are going to keep producing food all throughout the season that are also insanely cold tolerant and will go deep into November. And an example of that is this Swiss chard right next to me. I grow a decent amount of Swiss chard and a lot of kale for the same reasons and they get both get planted halfway through May and they get to maturity and we harvest them all summer long, little bits at a time. And then right around now, we slow down the harvest, let them grow, get really full and lush like we're getting to here. And then we can harvest them as deep into November or even December, depending on how cold the fall is. And we get that delicious, sweet, crunchy green that you could cook with or make salads with up until Christmas if you're lucky. And I don't have to replant anything. So this Swiss chard and the kale that we have in the field has only been planted once and it's produced food for us all season long. So you can do that with parsley, spinach even, um, kale, and even celery. Those aren't quite as cold tolerant, but there's a lot of crops that you can plant once and harvest many times. I actually have a video about that that I'm gonna put a link to up here called Cut and Come Again or plants that you can plant once and harvest many times because there's a whole bunch of those that are really beneficial but kale and chard are 
the bonus plan on that because they can go really deep into the cold weather. This will last until the weather gets probably below about 10 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm sure we'll still have really nice kale and chard. So that's another easy way to have an abundant fall garden. So once you got all your fall crops in the ground and growing, the, other, the only real thing to do left is to water them correctly for the rest of the season. So a lot of these crops have been growing since July. So we water the whole field two to three times a week for basically two hours with a sprinkler like this. And I like wobbler sprinklers like this because they give you a nice rain effect and the water becomes really even. It's a little better than an impact sprinkler. You can Google wobbler sprinkler and you'll find all sorts of options that are becoming a lot more available now. This one is from Neversink Farm. I can put a link to this exact one in the description. But watering with a sprinkler for really deep amounts less often is the key to getting your crops really, really healthy. So, and that pretty much goes for most climates. Uh, in Wyoming, we don't get much rain, so we have to irrigate for all of our vegetables. And watering two hours in this field gives me about an inch of water, and that will feed the crops for two to three days in the summertime when it's like 90 degrees or above. And then basically starting around August, it cools down. We just switch that back to once a week. We do two hours a week. And then you just wait. And now we're pretty much in the, at the point where almost everything is mature. And all we got to do is harvest whenever we want. And we have this whole field that is basically like inventory for us where we don't have to replant and it's going to stop growing, but it'll, it'll sail through the cold weather and just feed us for a really long time. If this is making sense, comment the word fall down below and leave me any questions you might have about what I'm talking about because I'd love to start a conversation about fall gardening. And I know it's kind of a new concept to a lot of gardeners out there because it is a little trickier than spring just because the timing is all different. But I love fall gardening and fall food production because from my perspective, there is way less stress and the food tastes way better. In my climate, our summer is pretty short. So fall starts basically in August. And so I really bank on fall production on the field because our summer is just not long enough to get a lot of summer production of stuff like tomatoes outside. So most of what you see behind me is all cold tolerant and it gets sweeter as the weather gets colder. And once you get the timing right on fall gardening, Basically, you just have a whole field of food ready whenever you want it, as long as you harvest it before it gets really, really cold or there's a foot of snow on the ground. So it's sort of like inventory. You don't have to replant it. It's just food you're looking at when it, you just look at your garden and you can decide what you're having for dinner and figure out how you're going to work your food into your recipes. You know, you got onions, kale, carrots, lettuce, cilantro, dill, radishes, turnips. All of these things are spectacular fall crops. If you have the timing right and you focus on that fall planting calendar, you're going to have a good time and you do what I'm talking about with watering. So definitely leave me any comments and questions you have below about fall gardening. I really would love to talk about it. So whether you like this video or dislike this video, hit one of those thumbs below and let me know. And if you found it interesting, please hit that subscribe button because I got a lot more to say about growing food. There's a lot more topics to cover and share this video with anybody you think might find it interesting or is interested in growing their own food. So if you're serious about growing your own food, check out my free garden starter guide at the link in the description where I go over how to set up a really easy, stress-free version of this farm in your backyard in four easy steps. You can do everything I do on the farm in your backyard with that garden starter guide. So check it out at the link in the description. Hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next